Hello, my name is Christina and in this video I will show you how Gideon can be useful to microbiologists with a particular interest in enteropathogens. Let's begin. For microbiologists, what's going to be very interesting is how many medically important pathogens we collect. Um, so in here we have nearly 2,000 different bacteria, 157 mycobacteria, 153 viruses, and 135 yeasts and algae. Um, if we go to an HZ list, we can easily see them at a glance. Um, and in here we can sort by type. So for example, I'm sorting by bacteria at the moment, and then I can look down the list to see the full extent of the Gideon database. So perhaps I'm interested in bacterium called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Let me just find it in the list here. Okay, and Gideon will have a page like this for every pathogen in the database. So for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, first of all, we will have etymology. What etymology does, it explains the name of the pathogen, and in particular for those microbiologists that teach, this can be a useful tool uh, to help students remember what the name stands for. Then we have uh, some key notes and ecology notes. Ecology is very important. Where is the pathogen found? Um, what uh, infections or conditions is it associated with? So for instance, dacryocystitis is uh, known to be associated with uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And if I click on the citation in here, I can then click on the link and it will take me to the text and we can read the full text article in here like so. Okay, right. Scrolling down the list, we will find related terms. Uh, that includes all the names that the pathogen has been called before. You can search the pathogen by any of its names and find the current one. Uh, then we have images gallery and the full phenotype spelt out in here. We can share this page with a colleague at a click of a button or we can download the PDF for future reference. Now what I want to do here, I want to add this pathogen to a comparison list and compare it side by side to other pathogens of interest. I'm going to go into the comparison table now and in here we only have one pathogen and the full phenotype displayed. Okay, what I would like to add to this is Helicobacter pylori. This is another very well-known enteropathogen and also Salmonella enterica cerebar typhi. And here I have all three of them lined up very nicely. I can add up to 10 pathogens, but in this case, I just want to compare those three. And I can now sort by phenotypic characteristics and see what's never present in a pathogen, what's always present. So for example, we can see Pseudomonas aeruginosa is always an aerob. Uh, that means it requires air uh, for its respiration. And Helicobacter pylori is not, and Salmonella enterica cerebar typhi also isn't. So right now we're showing only distinguishing characteristics, but if we switch the slider, we can compare the entire phenotype side by side, and we can export it if we like. Again, we can email the PDF to a colleague that we might be working with or researching with. And in here I can also click on typical susceptibility, so drugs effective against a particular pathogen. But what else I can do? I can add all of those pathogens into the same place. Uh, here we go. And I want to discover antibiotic or a range of antibiotics that will be effective against all three of them. So here we go. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Helicobacter pylori, and Salmonella enterica cerebar typhi. There are 16 antibiotics that will be effective against those three pathogens. Uh, really a miracle of medicine. Uh, now I can, if I want to, I can go into the drug profile and export further the mechanism of action, interactions with other drugs, any toxic effects. Um, also, I can explore um, all the trade names of which we have over 30,000 and the spectrum, what other pathogens that particular drug um, is effective against. All right. 
So now that we have done a little bit of a comparison between pathogens, the next thing I would like to do is perhaps look into a very particular disease uh, that I might be working with or, or researching and we can go to explore where we can explore categories of the following data, diseases, drugs, vaccines, microbes and countries. Um, so if I go to diseases, I can now search diseases by fingerprint and maybe I'm interested in bacteria that is associated with water and uh, is present in India. And there are 15 diseases like that. Cholera is the one of interest to me at this point in time because I'm looking into enteropathogens. Uh, right off the bat, Gideon says it is endemic or potentially endemic to 97 countries that we track. In here we have specific country nodes, so we can look into any one of those that we like. And we can have a look at the worldwide node, in essence, a global overview of the disease with all historical background, notable outbreaks, regional, global, and so on. Or we can have a look at the outbreaks map. Now, this is a fantastic visualization tool that goes back to 1817 for cholera. Okay, and we can narrow down this range and we can say, just show me um, all the outbreaks since 2020, and Gideon will do that. Now, if we zoom in, we see bubbles disperse and display the exact locations with the exact number of cases that have been recorded. Um, you might notice that the colors on the map are different. So this is the endemicity. This is annual disease rates per 100,000 population. And this will be different for every disease. What we're trying to do here is highlight where the hotspots are. And we can see that um, the darkest color is over 100 people per 100,000 population. And that's going to be the highest rate. So now what I could do, I could explore a country of interest. So perhaps I want to go into Mozambique here and see what Gideon knows about this disease. So we can see that there are different provinces um, that are known to be effective. There is a graph uh, on cholera cases, cross-border events, deaths, notable outbreaks. And we can enrich this table by adding these extra parameters in here. Um, and if I scroll down, you can see that the notes on these outbreaks are really quite extensive and chronological. Okay, uh, now perhaps I would want to click on, on another country, um, select India for instance, or maybe I just want to switch to a different disease such as amoebiasis. So amoebiasis uh, is endemic everywhere and so we will see this whole map colored with outbreaks in different places of this particular disease. Uh, this one is very notable, uh, over 80,000 cases in Tbilisi in Georgia in 1998. Um, now, amoebiasis is a parasitic disease, and how do we know that? We have a summary of each disease, just so we have a page for every anti-infective drug, for every microbe, we have a page for every disease. And in here, I can see agent, reservoir, vector, vehicle, incubation period, diagnostic tests, a typical therapy, uh, any related diseases, etymology, everything is here or on a single page that's easy to understand. We have um, quite graphic image galleries and clinical findings notes. Again, every page in Gideon can be shared with a colleague at a click of a button or um, can be downloaded as a PDF. All right, so if we want to have a look more into Georgia, that outbreak that I mentioned earlier, we can see that that was actually the most they ever had in the country, but the true case number was estimated to be much higher. Okay, let's head into the lab module. Lab module allows microbiologists to identify pathogens. So for instance, if I go into bacteria, probability engine. This is an interface that has been designed for professional microbiologists that are working in the lab and have their own established processes of identifying a pathogen. What this will help us do is um, add the findings that we have seen under the microscope and determine what pathogen is the most likely according to its phenotypic characteristics. So Gideon knows how common is each phenotypic characteristic in each pathogen. And it can do the Bayesian analysis on the right hand side over here. And you can see that as I'm adding more findings, and by the way, they're all explained so that we are all on the same page. 
this list narrows down. So we, we just had over a thousand, now it's 990. Okay, so this pathogen is motile. Yellow pigment is not noted. The pathogen is also microaerophilic. It grows on ordinary blood agar and McConkey agar. It is capnophilic. It grows at 42 degrees Celsius. Oxidase and catalase are also positive. And we whittled this list now to just nine pathogens that are now quite likely. And the most likely culprit that we're dealing with here is Campylobacter uni, subspecies uni. Uh, this is a very famous enteropathogen that causes gastroenteritis in humans. Now, what I could do here, I could ask why something did not appear on the list. Perhaps I want to query why Pseudomonas aeruginosa is not on the list. And Gideon will tell us it's because it's not known to be microaerophilic or capnophilic. So these characteristics do not match that particular pathogen. Um, but yet there's 98% probability that we're dealing with Campylobacter uni. So I'm going to go and inspect the page of this pathogen to learn more about it. And sure enough, we have etymology notes, ecology notes, drug susceptibility that we can check here. There are 55 antibiotics that are effective against this pathogen. Um, image gallery and phenotype spelled out. I could go ahead and compare it to other pathogens that I have in my comparison table. Gideon remembers what we had before, so we would need to clear the table if we wanted to do a brand new comparison. And in here I can search and sort by Campylobacter uni's phenotypic characteristics against all the other pathogens. So now we will see what's always present, what's usually present, what's never present, uh, what kind of characteristics we're talking about in each category of basic tests, general tests, and so on. Another thing that could be interesting to clinical microbiologists interested in um, enteropathogens um, is this diagnostic facility. So if um, you find yourself assisting a physician in diagnosing a disease, and perhaps the patient traveled to both United States and India, um, we're going to look for all diseases that are present in both countries and a filter by symptoms here. So again, we're doing Bayesian analysis in the background. Um, and in this case, I'm going to say that patient came to us after eating some eggs. Um, and a couple of days later, they started feeling very unwell. So we might as well add that. Is disease prolonged and recurrent? No. What's the incubation period? Now I've entered my incubation period here, uh, which really helps understand which disease might be at fault. And now we have several that um, we might want to identify in the lab. Salmonellosis, Campylobacteriosis, or E. coli diarrhea. Now let's add some more findings. So the patient experienced vomiting, um, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. And as I'm adding those findings, you can see that the probability of a certain disease is increasing. So at that point, the physician might come to microbiologists and ask them to help identify the pathogen. But it's, it's worth knowing um, what work uh, prompted that inquiry. I hope you found this useful. And if you would like to learn more, please do not hesitate to book a demo with one of our team. Thank you for watching.